I did watch it. I watched both episodes. Oh, I didn't know I could watch an episode and pay for it. Now I feel dumb. Well, you should. Well, why would you want to pay for it? All right, well, let's just bitch about Bill Moore for an hour. All right. I think we can That's easy enough. (laughs) Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of Superhero Speak. But I think many of the people that love this character and that love superheroes in general have used these stories as inspiration to say, you know what, I'm going to do something good in the world. I'm going to make a difference like my hero when I was a kid. That is my fondest memory of it because when, you, when you're when you doing comic books, you want them to affect people, right? You want people to care. You want, you want to strike emotions. And I knew that that clone saga was striking a lot of emotions. Can you yeah. imagine Pulp Fiction starring Goofy and Mickey Mouse? I can totally <laughs> imagine that. I'm Don't sure somebody's written that one. Pounder with cheese in France, Mickey. <laughs> what? <laughs> the ale with cheese, Mickey. Yeah. I can totally. See? I, I, would, I would watch the hell out of that movie. Yes, I gladly saw, sacrifice that my, my progeny to you, a mighty Marvel beast. <laughs> <laughs> but Neil Adams is somewhere going, hmm? it's, it's my time. Uh, <laughs> How do you measure success? Hey everyone, you're listening to Superhero Speak. I'm your host Dave. And John. And Judy. And uh this week, no guests, just the just the three of us. Um thanks to everyone who so far has downloaded the bonus episode that was released on Sunday. Uh that is our Women in Comics episode. I just wanted to make sure. Everyone knew it was out there. It wasn't expected. In fact, uh, somebody I work with today came up to me and said, did you release early? And I was like, no, no, that was a bonus. Enjoy. So um, we did talk about it last week, so I wanted to make sure we said that. That being said, how you guys doing? H- how are you, John? Um, um, I, I, have you, have you de- listened to any good podcasts lately? There's no. one that comes out on Wednesday. You should try. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I have not. Not, not even close. Not, not, not even. No, no. Do you know, <laughs> do you know what a podcast is? I don't know. I think you tried to explain it to me once, but I kind of fell asleep. So not anymore. So are you under the impression we're on old time radio? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He thinks we just. Uh, um, just have a conversation every week. He doesn't realize oh. it's being recorded. That's odd, because I didn't know you guys before a year and a half ago. <laughs> Shh, don't confuse him. You, <laughs> you're happy you didn't. Okay. No, but anything new with you, John? Uh found a new isekai. What is Bless an isekai? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they, it's a genre of anime, um, basically where the anime is about a character who comes from another world. You know, the, the, I was sitting at my computer one day and got sucked into a fantasy world where all the, uh, all the lollies like me. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, this, now remember the last one I, t- I was talking about was that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Oh, so, yeah. So that, that's, that's one. Also known as slime art online. It's kind of, which is really funny if you're an anime person. Um, but the new one is called the rising of the shield hero, which is, which is really cool because he gets sucked into another world and everybody treats him like utter crap. Wait, wait, so. but it's not shield like, you know, shield the TV show. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Although that now, now I've got a really good idea. Trademark in that. It's ours. Oh, well, I mean, a lot of people sh- treat that show like crap, so it just makes sense. Te- technically, technically, actually, if you're talking Shield in another world, that's already been done. That was like the the last season, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I felt where they were. The oh, that's right. You off the <laughs> that was where they were trapped in the future. So, yeah, kind of. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much that. And, uh, and also I actually did something that you told me to do, which is kind of makes me feel weird. Um, cause, cause it means I'm prepared for this and I, I, I don't know how to handle that. Oh, well, good. It's a good thing JD screwed it up. Uh- oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> as long as there's balance. 
I was going to make a joke about getting sucked into high and tight because there was a joke there. But like, <laughs> dude, that was like 10 minutes ago. You went off and I lost track of what you were saying. Like after <laughs> I watched. That's okay. I lost track of what I was saying. Too. You're saying words that I know what they all mean, but the, the order in which you presented them <laughs> is leaves me confused and yet strange. <laughs> I do not think those words mean what you think they mean. That's how I feel listening. <laughs> so, so I know there's some kind of like good wrestling thing that happened to you, JD. Oh yeah, you were posting too. Yeah, yeah, I was busy this weekend. We had our conference tournament. It was pretty cool. They had the both the varsity and the junior varsity conference at our school in DeKalb, and uh, we had there's 14 weight classes and we had 13 kids in the finals. So we had nine champs, and we broke a record for the most amount of team points scored. So uh, we had a good weekend. We started our state's tournament series. So the next four weeks are high-level tournaments. So we're, we're at the end of the year. So that's pretty exciting. Cool. But then I drove home through a blizzard, and I, hate, <laughs> and I hated my life. Oh, that must have been. Yeah, that's right. You were, it, how cold is it there right now? Right now, it's not too bad. Uh, Wednesday, it's supposed to have wind chills of negative 50. I, yeah, we, it was, it's what, it's gonna be just without the windshield, it's gonna be like negative 25. Negative 25. There. And I'm not like being hyperbolic, like this is serious. If they're talking about like negative 50 degree wind chills and, and a high of negative, like five, negative 20. Okay, so here's what you do. You go, do you, you have a house, right? Yes. Say, your second floor, you have a second, you go out, yes. you go out, you go to the second floor, you open up a window, and you toss a glass of water out and watch as it freezes or turns into snow before it hits the ground. I'll probably show my child that. I'll probably show it to Andy. But they're like saying if you're outside, you're going to need medical attention. That's why I'm saying you do it out the window. Because <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> after that, you close the window and then you like, you know, get under an electric blanket or something. Cause it's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be ridiculous. Fortunately, I'll have a new episode of Superhero Speak to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can listen to myself. Uh, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be like negative two here, I think. Like yeah, that's, that's pretty cold for here. It's not as bad as negative fifty. Wow. No. no. Well, I I, I, that's a wind chill. Uh, oh, it's only gonna be negative twenty four. Oh, oh, okay. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> negative temperature shouldn't exist. That's all I'm saying. I agree. We should start over. There you go. Um, let's see. What did I do? Oh, nothing exciting. Uh, my wife has started a new thing, and uh, um, I'm a little excited about it because I'm a foodie. She started making her own pasta, and, uh, and it's really good. So so here's the thing for those who, who uh, maybe have uh, issues with diabetes or, or hypoglycemia. So... She had uh, read an article that semolina flour, and it's true, it has higher in protein and lower in the glycemic index. So she started making pasta with that, and uh, tastes just like regular pasta. Tastes good, and uh, it's slightly healthier for us. So you know, something for people to try at home. But yeah, other than that, I also prepared for this week, but JD screwed that up, so we won't get into that. I don't have cable, man. I'm a millennial. We got see, bored. See, un- unlike us, Dave, he has a life. What, what? Well, a- according to certain people. <laughs> well, I'm, wait, not, I'm not stepping in this one. This is between y'all. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about that, those certain people. Are you like, is that your microwave? Are you making dinner? I just... Now I'm hungry. I'm well, in the basement and my dryer just went crazy. Oh, stand by. Okay. I'm going to put it on mute. I, hope it's, <laughs> I was about to say, I hope it's his microwave or I guess his dryer, not, you know, uh, smoke you, detector. You really should remember to put your microwave on mute before you do the podcast. Something about that doesn't seem right. I said, I said dryer, not microwave. Oh, but oh both works. <laughs> Can't eat what comes out of the dryer. I guess I could. It's a dryer. <laughs> Just don't put food in the dryer. Uh. <laughs> Why not? Uh, could put in the dryer. You, you could, but I don't think it would cook well. And, you know, might not oh, taste right. 
<laughs> well, it'd make a tossed salad pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you like a warm, <laughs> mm, warm tossed salad. Yeah, you put it on Whoa, the delicate side. Oh, we just we just crossed over some boundaries. Uh oh. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I didn't I, I, say I wanted to toss your salad. Whoa! <laughs> J- Whoa. JD, JD, you're the first one to mention hentai, okay? So. Whoa! Oh, I only know what that is because of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, people at home, we are not going to explain that one. <laughs> no, no. That, that, that's, no, we don't need to. I have Google. <sighs> <laughs> yes. That's, that's what Google's for. I was uh, referring to how you found out from me, so <laughs> never mind. Just don't look it up at work. <laughs> no, no, don't look up anything we mention at work. None of it is safe for work. I work for myself and I'd fire me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of things that aren't safe for work, let's take a look at a couple of uh, tweets from our audience. Um, Unpopular tweets, as it turns out. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, 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 we won't get into that. Wait, which one of us? Which one of us caused the trouble this time? No, 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 no. Some people think it's boring when we interact with our audience. Okay, <laughs> dicks. <laughs> uh, um. So we talked about Ghostbusters coming back, right? Yeah. Um, I'm excited still. Paul Brosnan, or uh, Terminal Hamster, as he's better known on Twitter. Let's uh, go with that. I like that. That's cool. He said, uh, Ghostbusters 2016 uh, flop highlighted how the original Ghostbusters was truly an amazing movie that nothing can take away from. True. Ghostbusters 3 can't damage the experience either, so let's just hope it can add something great. So That is a really good sentiment. I like it. And then Timothy Jones, or uh, at Tower Great Comics, uh, said, "I am pretty excited for this. That I, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this. I'm thinking maybe the next generation of Ghostbusters finds the car and costumes on the on the legacy, or they convince the original group to continue." So uh, I'm hoping more of a hand, uh, passing of the torch. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I mean, because that's what we were missing. That's what I was expecting in the last one, and well, we didn't get it. No, no, and you don't really want to see Dan Aykroyd trying to run around catch ghosts anymore. No, and you know, I mean, okay, you know, Dan Aykroyd and and the the whole cast, like all of them, um, even Hudson, they they were some of the funniest people you could find anywhere back then. Now. You know, um, Dan O'Croy's got some, yeah, iffy, uh, positions, I guess. And I don't know. I, I, I just, you know, it's time to pass the torch and, 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 you know, give him a really good send off. Right. I think JD should star in the next one. I would be okay with that. I'm not a very good actor, but I'd like the money. <laughs> you could wrestle the ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> ghost wrestling. <laughs> that sounds it, wrong. <laughs> you you believe in anything as long as they paid you, right? Well, I don't know about anything, but I like money. <laughs> Ghost wrestling sounds like something that you'd find on well, one of those channels we were talking about. Yes. Uh, if you don't, if you don't remember, there was that one scene in the original Ghostbusters with Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, but was that a dream or was that actually happening? It didn't matter. It was kind of like you know. They, that's that's like that's like uh, just about everything in in the original RoboCop. It's there's nothing in that that could possibly be shown in a movie today. <laughs> Dude, RoboCop is ridiculously violent. Like yeah. if you compare, like <clears throat> my parents let me watch that. I was like eight, and we watched it on video. <laughs> oh, and looking man. looking back on it, what were they thinking? Like it's awesome, but good lord, it explains yeah. so much. Uh <laughs> no, that yeah, was a kind of. It kind of does. To be quite honest with you. <laughs> Just the beginning when he gets killed, like that's so uh, violent and gruesome. Oh, oh my god! It's ridiculous. Or when they drop the one dude in the toxic waste and he comes out. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. 
And and for me, like, oh, this is cool. Like, <laughs> and for a minute that you're expecting the toxic, that, that's the, was it the toxic origin Avenger. story of the Toxic Avenger? Yeah. But, you know, then he gets hard. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we also yeah. uh, talked about the one and only. Segways brought to you by John. George Perez, uh, retiring. That was good. Second. Uh, <laughs> Who, uh, we talked about it and then Geek to Me Radio, uh, another great podcast had replied with, I've met him twice before and he's one of the best. And they obviously had a picture of him with George that he, the, the host of the show, uh, that he shared. And of course I had to reply with a picture of me with George Perez. I know it's not one upsmanship. Is it? <laughs> but yeah. So, um, so that was a nice little sharing memory. And then finally we had talked about, uh, this is going back a little bit with our Aquaman Spider Verse review. And, uh, Nerd Buzzed, uh, had replied, uh, we review this on our next episode. I love both movies for different reasons. One thing I liked about both was that they represent the future. Spider-Verse is great for old and new young fans, and uh, Aquaman is the Fast and Furious of the DC. Yeah. You shouldn't, that's, actually, that's actually pretty good. You shouldn't like it, but you can't be helped. But it can't be helped. Yeah, this is true. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's nerd buzzed, so... Uh, so uh, I so, haven't checked them out yet. Sorry, guys, but I will check out your podcast with that episode. <laughs> so, so is like the the next um, Aquaman going to be like you know Aquaman Tokyo Drift or you know Atlantic <laughs> Atlantic Drift? Yes. Tokyo Drift is like the uh, the season of the witch, in the <laughs> Fast and the Furious universe. It's the one that's largely forgotten. This is true. I didn't realize that was a conversation killer. I apologize. You, you, no, yeah, you know, right there. It's just ah, well, real. if you want to keep the conversation going, even though JD tried to kill it, um, and we want to join us every week on the show with via social media, you can follow us on Twitter at superhero speak or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash superhero speak. Don't forget to check out our website every week. We have been fast and furiously. <laughs> Uh, updating yeah. it with news and reviews. Um, we actually have an uh, interview up there, a print interview with um, James Peaty, who is the writer of Doctor Who, Road to the 13th Doctor for Titan Comics. Uh, we have a couple more of those reviews coming, I'm sorry, interviews coming up on the website. And uh, yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to us on Stitcher or Spotify. <laughs> John, or Apple Podcasts. And uh, while you're there, you know, please drop us a review and uh, and give us a nice five-star review because that helps increase our visibility on the platform. Uh, I'm sorry. My audio dropped out there. Did you say something? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't ignore a podcast while you're recording it. Afterwards, I, it's different. I can try. <laughs> like Thanos, who snapped your fingers and half the podcast disappeared. <laughs> All right. I guess we need to talk about some news, huh? Um, and we're going to start with the thing that, that JD doesn't want to talk about. So I don't even have a joke. I don't even know where to go with that. You stumped me. Well, I mean, I, I, look, I, I at least want to address it because I, 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 you, you got me thinking about the question you asked the other day online. Um, so Bill Maher, of course. Uh, for those who don't know, on his show again, double down about oh, that that dick about uh, you know comic books are for kids and and people need to grow up and any who anyone who was outraged by his uh, his comments needs to you know grow up and get over it and uh, he goes on a good long tirade and he then even uh, begins to attack Kevin Smith who's been on his show several times. Um, about the way he dresses and, and whatnot. And, um, yeah. So the, the, the question that you raised, JD, was 
why is this the hill he wants to die on? Like, it doesn't make any sense. I did say that. Um, you have any thoughts on that? I don't know. I mean, honestly, whenever I think about it, my first thought is, fuck this old baby boomer chode. Like, that's honestly all I can think about. Like, why do we, like, when you, when you work with kids, you know, we try to work with them about bully stuff. And the second you give a bully power, you know, they own you. And I really feel like that we're giving Bill Maher way too much power on this. You know, like, quite frankly, he's irrelevant. He hasn't been relevant since ABC kicked him off his show 20 years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, Bill Maher, he, like I said, he's an aging baby boomer who grew up in an era when comics were meant for kids. But because he's too cool for school and hasn't looked at anything in 30, 40 years, 50, 60 years, I don't know, he's old as balls. Like, I really could care less what he thinks. Like, he's going to go on his show, act like he's super cool because he's trying to, he's desperately hanging out with women a quarter of his age to try to retain some type of usefulness. Like, there's a painting of Dorian Gray just wasting away in his basement. <laughs> and act, act like he's a, the man because he smokes a bunch of weed and look how cool I am. I'm all LA. Well, and yeah. I have these, these uh, ultra liberal opinions that really aren't that liberal anymore. Like, I don't. Have, that, I, have, I have no time for him. That that picture of uh, in his basement. That's of his morals. Can have some. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, I guess my take on it is that, like, number one, um, he goes on this tirade, but yet people forget he was in Iron Man three. Like, you know, you can't be a part of the culture and then attack it. It just it's sure you can. It's you intellectual. Check. It's it's intellectually dishonest, though. You know what I'm Bill saying. Bill entire career is based on intellectual dishonesty. Yes, he had a television program based on the kind of entire concept of it. Hmm. Like, there's nothing. <coughs> Bill Maher is nothing but a giant hypocrite and guy who thinks he's really self important. He's a smug douche. Like, and that's his gimmick. So, I mean, credit to him for sticking with the gimmick and finding something that works for him. Like I said, like I don't like in this day and age to have. Someone who is completely irrelevant. He has an HBO show that's watched by people that are, you know, quite frankly, old. So I mean, why, why does any, why do any of us care? Like, I think I'm glad that he doesn't like it. Like, it makes comics counterculture again. Yeah. Like, good. Your parents, like, old people shouldn't like things that young people like. <laughs> let's play that. Let's play that game. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> um. And then the other, the other thing was. You know, the attack on Kevin Smith and the way he dresses and, and they show a picture of him in a hockey jersey. But I mean, I'm a big Kevin Smith man and I know that he's lost a lot of weight since his heart attack. He doesn't wear the jerseys anymore because he can wear regular clothes again. So like that, it goes back to that relevance thing. Like you're going to attack someone. Make sure you like know what they're doing before you try to latch uh, out at them. He's a bully. He's just being a bully. And that's easy. Kevin Smith is kind of the world's most famous nerd. And he's an easy guy to take shots at. And Kevin Smith even r laughed it off. I mean, like I said, well, like this dude doesn't matter. I was going to say that was the best, uh, reaction was him saying like, he's, I'm not mad at him. He's a, he's a stoner like me and, uh, and he's a pussycat in real life. And he linked it, uh, a clip to the show when he was on where, Kevin Smith tried to kind of confront him about because he made fun of the way he dressed before, and and the and the and, and he was one of the people that was calling him fat when the too fat to fly controversy was happening, and he tries to like confront him on his show about it, and he kind of just brushes it over in that clip. So like, yeah, you're right. He's a bully. He's gonna say bully. this stuff, but if you go up to him and be like, "Hey, dude, what what the fuck?" Sorry for the language. He's just gonna be like, "Oh." Uh, I didn't mean it. Let's talk about something else. So my dad always told me as a kid that when you have a bully, you have to punch him. Because even if you lose, you let you, you let everyone around you know that you're not going to be bullied. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But you still got to pop him in the face. And sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be a real punch to the face. It can very easily, if you have the ability to verbally spar with anyone, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with taking a bully down with your words. And he's that kind of guy. He backs down. Watch his show. Like, he acts like he, he stands triumphant, but he never says the kind of things that he does in his rants to his guests when they're actually on the show. He's a coward. Oh, yeah. He's, he's all talk. Like I said, the fact that an irrelevant, immoral tool 
is so worked up over this that he's dedicated a month now of various episodes of his show to, to talking about it. It just shows that we still do have some counterculture, that we still, there is still a little bit of rebellion left in mainstream comics. So cool. That makes me happy. John, you've been, you've been quiet. Oh no, I'm staying out of this one. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I agree with JD in that if you feed the trolls, they only get stronger. Sure. I mean, it, th- these days, like, you know, they say, um, what any, uh, what, uh, any press is good press. Well, it's really true with some of these guys. It's like, you can't, you can be like just a completely horrible person. And because your name gets out there, you get, you get followers. So well, here's what I don't get. His show, his show is about politics and he's spent and he's all worked up over comics and comic book fans. He's had a 35 day government shutdown. And well, this is what his soft butt is talking about. Well, well, it's, you know, maybe it's just because, Hey, you know, I can get more views this way. It, look, look, he must have looked at his Twitter the next day after he said those things and, hey, what if, if I carry this a little bit longer, I can double that. That's a good point. Well, exactly. Like, like, since his show has come back, no one's been talking about it. He does this and boom, people are talking about him again. That's, that's, that's what it is. He found, He's like Candyman. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he found a button he can push every once in a while, bring it out just to like, um, get some feedback. And I think that's why Kevin Smith reacted online the way he did, because like you said, John, he's not feeding him. He's not going to get mad and have a rant because he'll just use that again. But if he's just like, ah, he's a pussy cat, you know, that's that. Don't die, JD. We need you. You all right? (laughs) I think you killed him. (laughs) JD? Hello? Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Sorry. He's, I, was on, I was on mute coughing my brains out. I couldn't find it fast enough. I, I was going to ask if anybody in the audience had a res. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I thought you were gone for a second. <laughs> I thought you were, like, choking on something. Yeah. I was. I was choking on something. And then you got very quiet. So, like, yeah. We thought this might have ruin- been the last episode. I was trying not to ruin the show as I hacked to death. Or no, ruin it no more than I normally do. No, okay. Uh, well, speaking of things that annoyed people, um, I thought this was an interesting one. It's not that big of a deal, but to some people it was. Of course, the SAG Awards were this past weekend, and they do their in uh, memory every year on the SAG Awards. And they left Kevin Smith out. And Stanley. I'm sorry. Ooh, sorry, Kevin. Yes, they left Stan Lee out. See, we were just talking about him. He was on my brain. Um, SAG awards are dead to me. And, <laughs> and like, I actually funny. It's funny thing is, I was flipping around and I happened to come on when the in, in memory was on, and I didn't even think about it. But apparently, a bunch of people jumped onto Twitter afterwards to voice their disgust. Um, like, I don't know. Do you guys think it's a big deal? Because he's not really, you know, he's a known as a comic book creator. He's not, Was I don't even know if he was in the Screen, screen Actors Guild. He was in the Screen Actors Guild because if you appear in the movies, you you are oh, okay. a SAG member. They do a great job taking care of you. Let's put that, I'm not going to bury the SAG Guild. SAG people are awesome. Like, they're amazing with taking care of, of their, of their, um, Union members, and right. um, they're great and easy to work with. That being said, uh, it's not his thing. He just he showed up in movies as Stan Lee. He wasn't really an actor. Like if anything, he was more of a producer. So I don't know, man. I think people, I'm of the mind that we get worked up over things that are kind of silly, and this is kind of silly thing for me. Because I mean, like, are we really going to put Stan Lee as an actor up there with Burt Reynolds? I right. mean, if it's the Producers Guild of America, <laughs> yeah, he should probably have a, a have a thing like. I don't know, man. I think I think we're being a little too sensitive on this one. Okay. Well, yeah, but maybe if we generate outrage, we can get more views. I get so, so John, John. Fair enough. John, put your torture <laughs> pitchfork down. You don't oh, need to be outraged. I'm sorry. But I just oiled the pitchfork and the torch. 
oil helps it light, but that's another story. I was wondering why you oiled the pitchfork. <laughs> oh, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's the old iron pitchfork price. You have to, like, you, know, you want the prongs to go right into your victim. I was about to know? say, it helps them slide <laughs> in better. Fair enough. Otherwise, otherwise, when you're pulling it out, it gets hitched on their rib cage, and uh, it's just kind of, it's it gets, it, you know. You speak from experience? You have to, you have to take care of your weapons. <laughs> uh, yes, he does speak from experience. Uh, he's been sad many times with a pitchfork. So. In the back. Okay, um. So, alright, so speaking of other things to be upset about, um, the Birds of Prey teaser came out today. Um. Go on. Uh, did you guys watch it? I did. Um. Is it going to be Mia Sarah's crazy day off? <laughs> I I don't know. I just was like, what am I watching? How is this a thing? I mean, I heard I heard the Mia Sarah. I'm like, I know that name. And when I saw when, when the first pictures you see are from Ferris Bueller, I'm like, oh my god, it's her. She's going to be. I thought she was really old now. <laughs> I saw my it's just, Sarah, but it's just it's just like 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 a fashion montage kind of thing where it's just. Flashing images of the different characters, and it was like, "What am I watching? And why did they make this?" I didn't think it was that different from the Ghost Watch thing we watched last week. To be quite mm, honest with you, no, I, yeah, that's completely yes. different. That's uh, the only difference. Go for it. The Ghostbusters teaser got me excited to go see a, a, a Ghostbusters movie. This made me go, "What am I watching? <laughs> this doesn't get me excited for a Prey movie." It does. It does make you interested, it's, but not excited. You know what it feels like? Um, like a, a promo for a CW, like a character promo where they just show quick flashes of the different actors and then it's like, and it'll come up and they'll say Arrow, Monday nights on CW or whatever. Yeah, I never like those promos. I think that was done intentionally, to be quite honest, because those are kind of successful. Like, I'll be honest with you, I, I done it. I made me want to see the movie a little bit more because I hated Suicide Squad and had no intention of seeing it, but I don't know, I kind of like the vibe. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Pesky millennial. Yes. I'm irritated. Ah, oh, you damn get it on. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just wish it had done actual scene from them. You know? Like that. But I don't think they're done, though. It's a, it's just a trick. I mean, it's just a teaser. Okay. And the, 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 shouldn't a teaser give you an idea of the feel the director is going for? And they if, haven't shot anything. They should. I think it, and I think it does. I think it's like, I think it's just stylistically I of what the movie is going to look like. And I do get a vibe you know, based on this and it'll be me that is going to be a um a little bit more looser film, shall we say, a little more clean, less loose. Mm. Oh, and it's the vibe I got from it's gonna be like what's it called? Like it's uh the full time man of oh excuse me. Yes, the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, which I still think is funny. And I think that that's the vibe it gives off because it gives off a very loose, very fun, I don't wanna say silly, but like slick looking idea of what the movie is going to so, be like, which is all you really want in a teaser. So kind of like like maybe a ninety stick? I it might be honestly they might be doing something in that kind of vein with, you know, heroes and, and an insane Harley Quinn. It's kind of like Harley Quinn book. You know, or the Harley study with Harley Quinn and Poison I mean like kind of kind of in that vibe. So I mean I get I don't I think I connected with what they were trying to do. And it made me go, Oh okay, I think I know what kind of movie this is gonna be. You know, they're not gonna it's not gonna be serious. It's gonna be a little bit more uh good esque, should I say? Uh, this, this is going to be Spider-Verse all over again. <laughs> That'll be correct again. <laughs> uh, we'll see what I'll say. Nah. <laughs> Very it's like, it, yeah, well, I mean, that's, what, what, what else can you say from this? You know, I mean, it, 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 it was. It was a CW promo, and that's, you know, a movie's not coming out to point way. So it's like, okay, great. I got, I got to see Harley Quinn twirl, you know. Um, you didn't even get, I don't even... I remember, you didn't even get to see anybody else's face, just Holly Quinn for the most part. She's a, she's a star. Yeah. But, oh, oh, I just noticed it. It's what? the same exact thing as the Joker trailer. <sighs> mm, you're right. Stylistically, it's the same. <sighs> so they probably I think that, but I said, I think they were aping what the Joker trailer was doing. In a less, see, like that was a little bit more creepy, where this one is aping um more fun, I guess. I think that I think the parallel is definitely supposed to be there, especially with it being a Harley Quinn. That makes sense. That, oh god! All right. oh, yeah, this, I put this in. But you now rumor that um, Joaquin Phoenix actually isn't playing the Joker in the movie. He's not playing Joker in the movie. The Joker. Yes. Hmm. That that it's 
I think Burma was like, it's loosely a joke and Joker origin story. And he takes inspiration, this thief who is, uh, or no, this guy who, that Joaquin Fee's playing. I'm okay with that. I mean, it takes place in the 70s or something. Really? Yeah, so, I mean, like, yeah. that was, I mean, like, again, they're not, I get that. We've talked about this a bunch, how they're not trying to, like, shoehorn stuff to fit continuity wise. Right. But it would, it kind of works in, in that way. And, like, when we talked about when we watched that, none of us really want, like, the concrete Joker origin story. Right. I think I'm okay with a pro Joker movie. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I think the edge off. Um, we'll see. But you know who could possibly go against Harley Quinn the Joker? Batwoman. Okay. And, uh, really good these. And, uh, and she has a new series that's going to be on the CW, and they are definitely moving uh, forward with casting this week. Uh, they have announced that Megan Tardy. Uh, oh, I'm gonna mess this up. Tandy. Oh, Tandy. Megan Tandy. Oh my God, Dave. Megan Tandy. Cameras, Cameras Johnson and Nicole King and K A N D. That's Kang. Are all joining the cast. Uh, Tandy will be playing uh Sophie Moore, who is the former college girlfriend of uh Batwoman. Mm-hmm. And the other one that's interesting is uh Johnson playing um. Lucius Fox's nephew, uh, which I didn't even know was a character in the comics. So that shows you how the last time I've read a uh, Batman comic. And then the, the third actor, they have not said character should be for the show. It's not someone from the comics. So, um, so yeah, I mean, definitely moving forward. You guys still excited for this? You're going to check it out. It's on CW, so you don't need cable to watch it. I'm just trying to watch the watch. I'm playing. She watches all those CW shows. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Batwoman is not a not a character I dislike, but not one that I've ever gone on my way to follow, other than her appearances in the in the Batman books. So I don't know. You know, I'll probably one, check. Okay. No, it's not right. to buy it. Okay. Well, one more CW um, DC show, and I will literally not be able to do anything after I get home from work so, except try to catch up on these damn things. So, so yes, yeah, so I was actually going to bring. Uh, what I was going to bring up is: Are we getting to oversaturation with this stuff? <laughs> Yes. And, 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 and over saturation just with one network. I mean, like, like you guys made this joke a couple weeks ago. Is it, CW just a consultant? Like, they won't have any other programming except for DC shows? It feels that, that way. That in Riverdale. But it's, yeah. I mean, it's not just that. It's also, um, what you call it? You've got, I mean, of course, uh, Gotham's coming to an end. Uh, but you also have, uh, Agents of Shield. You've got, um, what is it? The uh, Deadly Class now. You've got Umbrella Academy coming to Netflix. <laughs> um, what's the X Men series? That's one. Uh, Gifted. Hulu. Oh. Gifted. Gifted. Yeah. And, oh, uh, I haven't I haven't checked that one out yet. Uh, plus Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> I don't know. You know, so it's like. You got all these shows, then what? We've got what twenty movies coming out this year? <laughs> it feels that way. Um it, none of it matters though. The the only the only thing that matters is uh Avengers Endgame. No, seriously. Seriously. Well you say that, but then at the after Endgame's over, then you're gonna be like, Okay, now all that matters is far from home. No, because uh yeah, given given the history, I think like Endgame might stay in the. They might keep that in the theaters for like two months at this point. Oh, movies don't. don't yeah, have- no, normally they don't, right? But we've there've been a couple of movies, um, that that have been in the theaters for a lot longer than I than you normally see. For the last couple of years, I. Yeah. But I, I mean, and, and you're right. This is one that could do that. Um, but we'll see. You know, I don't know. It's it's an interesting. But the thing is, it's like again, it still doesn't go. It just still doesn't take away from like, you know, okay, after Endgame, are we all going to stop watching superhero movies? No, but eventually we're going to start getting more picky with just the movies. I think. You know, like, oh, I know, I'm not going to go to the theater to see that. I'll just go, I'll wait for DVD, you know? I do think we're hitting, we're starting to hit peak, peak saturation. Like, how much more can we really, 
how much more till it's all been kind of over? I don't know, man. Like, well, you, you, yeah, you're getting to the same problem that you did with the with the comic crossover. It's just like we nobody has enough time these days to watch all of the shows. So everybody's going to start picking and choosing now. You know, like four years ago, it'd be like, oh, yes, I've got this show. There's five shows, five comic book based shows. I can watch them all. It's awesome. Now it's like there's 18 shows. I don't have time to watch them all. Now I have to pick and choose which ones I want to watch. So there's going to be some fault. It also goes along the lines of like, um, there's a, you know, they all can't be top quality all the time as well, especially when it comes to TV shows. Like, you know, we've joked about it before plenty of times. Supergirl has got some really terrible episodes, like some really bad writing on that show, you know. But yet, a lot of people keep watching it because it's Supergirl, you know. Um, and, you know, like, is that a symptom of things to come? Now, granted, Black Lightning came out after that, and it's been consistently good, but... It's also not tied to that universe as well, but that's a whole other story. But like, you know, we're, are we going to get stinkers and they're going to be on air just because they're superhero shows for a while? Possible. I mean, that's just like, we have a large sample size. There's always going to be varying, like varying degree, varying degree of success and failure, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like with comics, like there's thousands of comics out there. Not all of them are great. Like, you superhero there's, there's books that aren't fantastic. And there's writers, also writers that just don't click with you. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I just worry that, that it, that, that it will be like the 90s. And when it's over, it's gonna be over. You know? Like, yeah. no one's gonna watch a superhero movie or show. And it's lasted a lot longer than I thought it was gonna, but I don't know. Right. Right. I think, I think it's just gonna eventually get to the point where, um, people are just going to stop watching this stuff. And then it's, you're right. It's going to be like a, a light switch was turned off. You know, all the shows will get canceled. Nobody's going to want them. And, and, uh, we'll be, we'll be looking for scraps again. It's like how the like cowboy movies were the rage for like 40 years of cinema. And then the late seventies, they kind of started to go away. And then the eighties, you have the big blockbuster ones. And now it's, you know, get them once in a while and you'll get a Western movie. Or like the big giant monster movies of the 50s. There are tons of them. And then they went away in the 60s. Now you get them on occasion and it's for nostalgia's sake. So I just, I just don't want it to become one of those things. You know? Uh, you get a Superman movie for nostalgia's sake. Hmm. I would like a Superman movie, a nostalgic Superman movie with a nostalgic Superman that doesn't kill people. <laughs> this <laughs> is true. That's <laughs> all I want. And, and doesn't always brood. Uh, done. We haven't bad mouth Zack Snyder well, so I know. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, you know, that's that's easy. Uh, <laughs> it surely is. And and you know what we might be getting, um, instead of a nostalgic oh. Superman, we're getting all new set. Again. <laughs> so according how to many, James, how many reboots? <laughs> this this will be three. Yes. So, so James McAvoy was talking with MTV News, and uh, he basically said he feels that Disney uh, and Marvel will probably go in a completely different direction with the X Men. And it's funny because he also said in the same interview, and, and this is a quote: "I love playing Charles, but if you write something interesting for you to do it as an actor, you can't just keep doing the same thing again and again and again. So it may be time for somebody else to come in." So it's like that statement makes me feel like well he ready to walk away from the role anyway. Well, yeah, but the whole point of Charles Xavier is the same thing again and again and again. It's like it's always that argument of you know him versus Magneto that should the mutant take over or should they coexist with vanity? There's there's only so many variations in that theme that you can act, right? <laughs> I agree. Um you know, it's also one of the reasons that actors leave roles because they get tired of playing the same character over and over again. So, I, you know, I don't, I mean, he's ready to move on. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, cause no offense to James McAvoy, but he's no Patrick Stewart. <laughs> and, um, and I do, th I agree. Like I, all of us kind of feel that way that with maybe the exception of Ryan Reynolds with Daredevil, uh, Daredevil <laughs> Deadpool, they probably will end up recasting him, you know, doing something completely different. 
and and they might redo Deadpool too, but um, we shall see. Is Kurt Loder still with MTV News? That was honestly my first thought. You quoted this was when you said James McAvoy talked to MTV News. I had to look up and see if Kurt Loder was still there. Turns out he does work for them in some capacity. Um, <laughs> I I don't know, Kurt man. Loder. Like, as a for you '90s folks out there, yes, um, yes, trust Gen Xers. And us older millennials. Uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, they probably do want to recast. I mean, like, Feige doesn't want the the baggage to go along with all the, the 20th Century Fox stuff. I mean, yeah, start it over again. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm kind of – I'm ready to be done yeah. with the 20th Century Fox versions. I want to see what they do with Dark Phoenix. Probably nothing great, but I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny because – uh, I heard rumors about the new Mutants movie where it was like, it was really bad, and that's when they decided, the original cut was really bad, and that's when they decided to make it a horror movie, and they reshot a bunch of stuff, and apparently the that version of it makes absolutely no sense, because they left things in that don't tie to other scenes in the movie, and that's why it's been like shelved permanently, and they're probably going to release it on Hulu. Eventually. Man, that is, I love that trailer. Like, I thought it was such a bold experiment. I didn't realize, part of me wonders if it is just a gigantic failure that they're trying to repair. Where did you find this article? Where did you see this? I heard it actually on, um, I believe it was the So Wizard podcast. Oh, I missed that. Yes, it was either Uh, So Wizard or Fans on Patrol. Sorry, guys. I can't remember which one. I listen to both of them every week. I don't. I don't know. Like I'm now. I want to watch that movie if it's if it's really that bad. <laughs> <laughs> the I had room so much, two point oh. Well, I had so much. Remember, we talked about it when that trailer broke in October of seventeen, yes. and I was all kinds of geeked up for it. And here we are, January of nineteen, and nothing's happened. So something ain't right. Yeah. No. I mean, and. Like, I agree, too, the idea of going somewhere different with a superhero movie and trying to do a horror-style movie, like, that seemed like it was going to work. But, I don't know. It's got to be really bad. So It's got to be really bad if it's so bad they don't want to... Like, we're talking about 20th Century Fox here. Like, how bad can it be? John? (laughs) I... I... (laughs) I mean, what am I going to say, right? I mean, I don't know. That's why I asked you. Like, I'm curious to hear what you have to say. I didn't like the the premise of making it a horror movie anyway. Um, but but that's my personal preference, and I can understand the interest of of seeing it done in that kind of a genre. But like you said, it's been a while now. There's nothing happening, and uh, I you know, I'm over it. <laughs> Are you now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, this, this is this is another problem. Look at how much is going on these days. It's like you know, you only have a certain amount of brain power to to you know think about how these things to analyze, right? So, okay, you ever heard we've heard about that for a while? Fell off. Maybe someday we'll hear about it again. Maybe you'll find it in the friggin' DVD bin in, in Walmart. But. Uh, you know, in the meantime, we still got more of a list that we're, we got to talk about here. It's just, there's, and there's more than that on the right now that we could talk about. It's just too much. Yeah. This is reminding me a little bit of the Richard Corman Fantastic Four movie story. Yeah, but, but that was, that was, oh, that was pretty good. That was mad in other exactly. Failure by design. Yeah, because they only did keep the license, but the the movie was still more true to the characters and and the characterization of of the Fantastic Four than the the reboots. Yeah, so it's true. Ah, yeah, Fox, Fox, Fox. What are you doing? Give us good movies and then then you get then you get bought off by the mouse and have nothing to offer anyone. No, no, but is possibly like at the end of the book, um, when it comes to Deadpool and. This is definitely a rumor uh news. They're saying that the solo Black Widow movie may be the first R rate of our films. Um you know how to about this rumor because it's Disney. Uh, this comes from Crazy Days and Nights, um it's Gossip website. 
and apparently they've done stuff right before uh, relating to you. So I don't know what how to feel about this, and I'm not really sure. Again, like, do you think, especially Disney, are they going to go rate it for the first time with Black Widow when they want that to be a big tentpole movie? You know. <laughs> Two, two two questions. Do they have to be in full movie? I don't. I don't have an answer to that. Um, though it, it it sort of seems against Disney to do an R-rated movie for the sake of doing R-rated movie. I mean, I mean Disney used to own Touchstone and they used to own Miramax and they used to do some um, more off-color stuff, but never under their Disney brand. Mm-hmm. Um, can Marvel afford to have that? And that part of me is like, why do we need an R-rated? Like, wh- what what is it about Black Widow? That is going to make make it an R. I mean, like, are we just going to give us a, a La Femme Nikita remake? Well, you, you know, we there already is a rated R um, Black Widow, and it's called Red Sparrow. Yeah. It, if you guys haven't heard about that, that that was all but in name Black Widow. And I actually heard was disappointing. I didn't see it, but it was enough Black Widow. Like there wasn't enough of the murder spot stuff in it. Well, That's only, but it was. I heard of it. It was pretty gruesome. From was it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, that, I I don't know, there was uh, one reviewer I, I listened to that basically said it was like a backdoor way of getting black, of getting a Black Widow movie as a rated R. It's it just like, is it going to, is, is, are they going to do like Black Widow was El Mariachi? Like, I just don't, I don't. <laughs> well, I, I think about, I get it. think about the flashbacks they showed of her origin already. In the in uh, I can't remember which movie that was. Care- it was Ultron. Ultron. Yeah, careful. We don't need a Black Widow origin story, though. We, we're past that. They we, we no, no, don't. No. But what I'm saying is, like, I mean, just a little bit they showed was fairly dark. So if they were to expand upon that um, the aspect of the character, it could be a fairly dark movie, and maybe it's not necessarily, you know, R for sex and nudity, but maybe it's just a little more dark than than your average uh movie. Your average and, superhero movie. Yeah, two two things to that. Um one, we saw that. We know what happens. Yeah. Like as far as the story goes, they they already treaded the area. Two, R rated movies typically make significantly less money than than yes. PG thirteen does. So if you're going to do that with the Marvel audience, you have to buy. You have to have a smaller budget because you're not going to make the same return on investment. So mm-hmm. if you're doing this just for an experiment, and also let's be real, Scarlett Johansson does not have a great track record opening a movie on her own. Yeah, like the whole thing, and I don't personally. I don't think Black Widow is a character. That really works unless she's playing off of someone. Like I, people were arguing, like, how come there's not a Black Widow movie? And I'm, I, you know, I've always kind of in the mind that because it really doesn't need to be. Like there really hasn't been a a long run on Black Widow because she's a spy. And part of like the part of what makes Black Widow work is that as a spy, she needs to bounce off of the heroes, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're gonna do like that's why Black Widow and Daredevil in the seventies worked. Like, so, Black Widow on her own? If you do a Black Widow and Hawkeye, maybe? But I still don't know why there has to be an R-rated movie, other than to say, well, we need to have an R-rated movie. Deadpool, I get. Like, Deadpool showed us what you can do with an R-rated movie. An R-rated superhero movie, excuse me. Like, what's what's Black Widow going to give us that right. we haven't already seen? And in, even, even in that aspect, like, uh, Deadpool did well, but it didn't make the money... That the other superhero movies make because it was R rated. Right. Yeah. Right. It just, as a business move, this doesn't seem like something Disney would do unless Feige really wants to do one R rated movie. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't seem like it. Like, it just doesn't, this just doesn't seem like something that, that Marvel has, well, everything is so carefully, so carefully, you know, constructed and planned and, and thought of. I mean, like, even their risks were like, protected. You know, this one, this just, I mean, like, like I said, to, if they're going to do Black Widow, like, they, like those movies already exist. Like, right. La Femme Nikita and, like we said, Red Sparrow. Like, it's been done. So, why? 
like I think what works is like what works about the Black Widow character is that we can play on the trope. You know, we know yeah. the trope. So yeah. you don't need that. I don't know. No, and I I also agree with you too with the you know, does she work on her own kind of thing? And I think part of the problem is they haven't built her up as a character on her own in these movies. You know what I'm saying? Like she hasn't saved the day or, you know, done something amazing where it was like, Oh yeah, I want to see more of that. Um, it, it's the same argument I make when people talk about, uh, if they kill Steve Rogers off, who's going to take the, the mantle. And I, I'm like, well, Bucky makes more sense only because he's been way more developed you know, as, as a successor to Cap in the movies than Falcon has, you know, I agree. they haven't given Falcon enough screen time. They haven't given him enough of a, you know, relationship with Cap in the movies where you're like, Oh wow. It makes sense for him to take, take over. Whereas hmm. when they killed him in the comics, I said Falcon should take over first because I loved all the, the Falcon and Cap stuff from the eighties, you know? And it was like, you know, they didn't, but they had brought Bucky in at that point, you know? So it's like, oh, well, this makes sense. It's like, yeah, but he's been gone for 40 years, you know? And now you're just bringing him back like it's nothing happened. Well, that's like the Brubaker run, the Winter Soldier Brubaker run is, is one of my favorite runs in comics. I think it's so good. And even, geez, it's been like 13 years or something after the fact. Like, and it made sense. Like, and he didn't, and Brubaker talks about it, he didn't want to kill Cap off. Like, that was yeah. just a, a Civil War thing. But he had set up, but you know, it worked with what he was doing. Yeah. And the story he told Bucky. Because then we got, like, three years of, of Bucky Barnes' as Captain America stories, which um I don't know if it's the political climate or just where Marvel is or the fact that um Ted Brubaker, quite frankly, is just – the, a better, a better creator. Let's just be, let's just be real. Than what was done when, um, for, than when Falcon was Captain America. Like it just, those were just better. Like those were better stories. I think there's better, there's more fertile ground to, to take from. And I think that Bucky is a more developed character. If Bucky takes over the role, there's a lot more we can play with as yeah. far as what's been developed. It just makes more sense. Hmm. That being said, I really like Anthony Mackie as Falcon, and would like to see more done with him. Yes, yes, I I totally agree that with that sentiment. Well, we did say there are, you know, we're getting our mini series apparently on Disney Plus, if and when that ever comes out. Um, Speaking of overkill, right? <laughs> yeah, but yes. they're, they're gonna win. Uh, <laughs> they always win. They always win, except. Let's see what happens at the Oscars. Um, so that was, uh, not your best. Okay. <laughs> I disagree. I like that one. So, so in a, uh, totally unexpected twist of fate, fate, twist of things. Um, the, the Academy had talked about creating a best popular movie category, uh, because everyone was talking about how great Black Panther was and it should be nominate it and so they said well we'll create a popular movie category and put it in there yeah um, which but, immediately got shot down right so they decided not to do that and apparently they have now nominated black panther for best picture the first superhero movie to ever be nominated for this and um i'm not really sure how i feel about this um what do you guys think john what do you think what, that it got nominated? Yeah. I still feel like Black Panther was kind of vanilla, but it definitely, I mean, it, 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 it hit every number. It didn't surprise me, but it did hit every number. I, and I can, I can see it as best picture. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay. How about you, JD? Return of the King was not the best Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> What? It's the one that won. It, Return of the King wasn't the yes. best Lord of the Rings movie. It won the Oscar, though. right? Hmm. Um, but that John was, Wayne. That, on, John Wayne won an Oscar for, I believe, The Shootist. Oh, like yes. sometimes the Academy just goes, okay, it's this. It's time to honor Their turn. This. That being said, and I said this when we reviewed the movie, I, I, I love Black Panther. It's not my favorite Marvel movie, but I think it's the most well-made Marvel movie. Um. Kugler, Kugler's prob, boy, he's such a great director. 
Um, I believe he was nominated with Creed in 2014. And I think that as far as art direction and as far as sound and as far as soundtrack and acting, and I think that Black Panther hits on a lot of great stuff. And it's a, it's a super well made movie. It's not my favorite. Guardians is my favorite. Well, actually Spider-Verse, that's not my favorite. But, <laughs> um, but as far as this year goes, and as far as they basically created this category to give Black Panther award, because culturally it had a big impact. Like, Black Panther is super popular among kids and among the African American community, clearly, and the hip hop community, and like people dug Black Panther. So I think that when a movie kind of takes people by storm the way Black Panther did, maybe, you know, rank and file geeks weren't as riled up about, we're not riled up, not, we're not as excited about it as some. Like for us, we're like, oh, yeah, another, another superhero movie. I think there's a lot of people out there that, to them, Black Panther is more than a superhero movie. And I think that that needs to be taken into consideration when dueling out an Oscar. Right. You know, so I think that uh, I, not only do I think it's, it's, I'm super happy it's not, I think it's going to win. So, all right. So, um, the thing that, that gets me is none of the actors are nominated. The director isn't nominated. It's not nominated for screenplay. It's only nominated for best director. And then of course, special effects, sound effects, blah, blah. The ones that all the superhero movies get, you know, um, which kind of makes me go, well, if you think this p- movie is good enough to be best picture, then why isn't Googler getting the nod for director? That happens all the time. Argo was the same way. Argo won Best Picture and Ben Affleck didn't get nominated. And Argo hmm. was a great movie. Because, I mean, this happens frequently. The Shawshank Redemption is largely considered one of the finest films of the 21st, of, excuse me, of the 20th century. It didn't win the Oscar. Forrest Gump did. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot, of, especially with, yeah. the, with the Academy is so weird and fickle and you never know what the Academy is going to think about things. They're not, they're very rarely, they very rarely have the so, pulse of things right. So, so I'm going to say my, like, yes, it's great to finally see a superhero movie get nominated, right? But like you said, it's probably not, it's, it's a good movie. Is it the best superhero movie? It's questionable, it's at least in the top five. But again, is it winning for the right reasons? You know, in the eyes of the fans of of the superhero fans. You know okay, the superhero the superhero fans really don't matter to the academy. You yeah. know, and and it's not like the greatest. I mean, this isn't right. But so what I'm saying is that it's not a nod to us. It's a nod to the movie and the cultural impact. But it's certain that isn't that the way a movie should be. Like a movie should, it, that's, I think that's what makes it great is that it, it's more than just a superhero movie. Like it, it captured people as more than just a superhero movie. And I think that's what I'm why saying is it that gets you're, it. you're like short of, I don't even know what could, I don't know what next superhero movie could have another Im- the impact like this one did. Um, Dark Knight was the next, was the one that was closest to the point, honestly. And that, that only got it for his. Right. So that, that's the question. It's like, so we're not going to get it again for a while, you know? But, right, it's, but it's, it's not necessarily like that either. It's also the year. Like what else came out this year? You know, I mean, like every, every, every Oscar season, it's not just, you so, know, you can't so you line think, up. I mean, but I, I, mean I, I, I can see, I can hear the, I can already hear the response, but you think that it was a better movie than Infinity War? I don't think it, uh, yes, as a movie. Infinity War doesn't stand on its own. Infinity War is predicated by 12 other movies that come up before it. Okay. Black Panther kind of stands on its own. You don't have to have seen um, <laughs> Civil War. 20 movies. <laughs> you don't have to see Civil War to dig Black Panther. It doesn't hurt, but you don't need to. Like, the flaw with Infinity War, and this is what people credit, this is the biggest criticism of Infinity War, and from, like, regular critics, is that it it is a movie that is predicated on what came before it. Now, that's also its strength, but I can easily see how the argument goes that it's, it's his flaw. And I think that I do, I think that Infinity War hits me on a different level because seeing Spider-Man die nearly crippled me. But that's me as a, as a nerd with, you know, 30 some years of, of loving these characters. You know, um, I think that would have, that death would have still had an impact on people who didn't have that kind of a background. And it probably, the, 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 the movie, the movie set that up pretty good. It did. 
with the relationship between him and Stark and, and the way he acted that, it, you know, it I think that it's, yeah. it's fantastic. I'm never gonna, I'm not saying that it isn't. What I'm saying though is for the Academy, Black Panther's a better movie to nominate. And I think it's a better, as far as a film goes, like, like Infinity War hits on the emotional beats and it's got a good script and it's, it, it does that kind of stuff really, really well. As far as an overall film, I think Black Panther is a better movie to look at. I think Black Panther has a more um, condensed story that is easier for an audience, an audience, not necessarily the superhero audience, to digest. I think if it's the movie to nominate, I think that's the one this year to nominate. I don't think Infinity War is, because Infinity War is also set up for another movie. Right, right. Like it ends on a giant cliffhanger. Like they're never going to do that. Right. Because it's not a complete story. That's what it is, though. But then in, so, in, in that vein, you know, looking ahead into the future, woo, Endgame should get nominated basically for the same reason that Return of the King got nominated. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let's see what Endgame is before it comes out. Well, yeah. We haven't even seen a trailer. I mean, like, maybe. I, I can't I can't speculate on that. And we have seen the, a trailer, so. That's true. I kind of that. But like, we don't know, we don't know anything like about that movie. Like, hopefully it delivers on all the, hopefully it delivers everything it's set up for. Hopefully it's a fantastic cinematic experience. It's still built on the precipice of 20 some movies before it. And you just, you, the Academy doesn't do, doesn't dig stuff like that. We do, but these, these, this, the Academy Awards is an award for, for, you know, superhero fans. It's not like, well, well, Spider, like, um, Iron Man was a better movie than Black Panther. Iron Man didn't get nominated. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, like, the world is different now. The year is different. They nominate 10 movies now for Oscars instead of six, like they used to. So, I mean, they try to open it up a little bit. And I think that, I do think that Black Panther needs to be looked at for what it did culturally. Cause like, most superhero movies don't do that, especially in this day and age where they come and go like the wind. Black Panther doesn't do that. Black Panther, like, I saw a bunch of little kids walk around, go, run around going to Wakanda forever. You know, that's pretty cool. Like, I'm talking little, little kids, like, who didn't know who the character really was six months before that. So, I do think there's something to be said about that, and I do think it's going to win, but I don't think that takes away from any other movie. Okay. Um, I will also mention here, uh, last thing, and so along with this, is that they did win, uh, what was the award? Best? SAG. Yeah, they won the SAG Best Cast, uh, for a movie. Um, so, and that's apparently one of the highest honors that SAG gives out. So. You know, I think that's probably a good sign because a lot of people who vote for the Academy are all SAG members as well. So, you know, if that's how they're feeling, there's a chance that it will win. Um, so we'll see. You know, I'm the curious. Academy. Okay. No, I was saying the Academy's weird, man. They gave the Oscar last year to a movie about a chick that banged the, the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> yeah. That like, it's true. I don't even think Guillermo del Toro could have predicted that when he had this crazy ass idea. Like, uh, <laughs> the Academy does weird things and you don't know what they're gonna, like I said, Shawshank Redemption has been, is largely looked at as one of the greatest films ever made. Forrest Gump, just a, a typical 90s, you know, um, star movie, star machine. That won it. I it's like Forrest movie. Gump. It's not a bad movie. <laughs> it's not a bad movie at all. But Pulp Fiction was better, and The Shawshank Redemption yeah. is a much better film. Yeah. Wait, Pulp Fiction and, and Forrest Gump are the same year? Yes. Oh, my God. That's, that's a big year, actually. The 94 Oscars are a very interesting one. Like, But Forrest Gump, and everyone talked about Forrest Gump, and everyone talked about Pulp Fiction. And that was the two. That was the competition everywhere. And everyone kind of ignored Shawshank. In retrospect, Shawshank is one of the greatest. Citizen King, largely considered one of the greatest movies ever made. Lost to How Green Is My Valley. Yes. I mean, like, the Oscars are stupid. I mean, like, it's just an, it's just a reason for celebrities to think they're awesome and dress, you know, fancy and, and they give each other awards and tell each other how great they are. And it's just, it's stupid. That's why award shows are losing their momentum because people have figured out that they're stupid and they don't mean anything. So I'm going to pose the question then to our audience here. Um, how do you guys feel about Black Panther being nominated for Best Picture? And is it going to affect you at all, your opinion at all, one way or the other, if they win or lose? And, like, do you care, you know? Um, obviously, it's not going to make me stop going to see those movies, so uh, it's just nice to get the nod, I think. 
All right. It's nice, <laughs> it's nice to be nominated. It's nice to be yeah. nominated. Yes, yes. Um, all right. So I think we can end it there because some people didn't watch a TV show we we're going to talk have about. Cable. <laughs> and we've been on for an hour plus. Well, yes. And that's the thing. We've, we have been on for an hour. Um, uh, uh, real quick, John, we were going to talk about daily class. Did you watch the first episode or what do you think? Like, do you like it? Do you not like it? I like it. I, I'm interested to see where it goes. Um, it's got a, this is one of the few shows I can actually say has a flavor to it, you know, and the, the main character is conflicted and yet, I don't know, the, the bent that he's got is, is to not take or speak any bullshit. He's, um, excuse my language. He's, he's just, he's, uh, you know, it, you, you get a hero. Normally you, you, you get a hero that's like, yes, you did well today. You won't get a hero that says, man, you fought like crap. You know, you should, you should go kill yourself. Um, this, I feel like this guy would do that. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and the, you know, the whole, the whole premise is really interesting and it's set in the eighties, which I lived through. And yeah, they did suck that bad. And Reagan was that bad. Um, people don't seem to remember how bad he was. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, I, I'm interested to see where it, it's, I don't know. I, I'm re- I, I, I can't wait for the third episode. Okay. Um, yes, it feels like. With some of the concepts they're dealing with, I would kind of describe it as Westworld as done by, um, oh shoot, I can't think of his name. 80s director, did all the teen movies. John Hughes? John Hughes. Yes. John Hughes taking on a Westworld type concept, um, where it's, you know, dark, introspective, uh, taking dark ideas and, 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 you know, putting them forward in a story. Um, yes, because it is a school where, Kids are learning to be assassins, but they have a weird moral code about it, you know, and you have to watch the show to understand. So yeah, like I highly recommend it. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. Um, of course it's on sci-fi and, uh, uh, for those who don't have sci-fi, you can, uh, watch it, I believe on Amazon Prime, but of course you have to pay per episode. So. Or you can watch it on the the sci-fi app, but <sighs> you need to have a cable, you need a cable account to do that one. Well, well, yeah, you need some kind of cable account. You can sign into the sci-fi app through Xfinity or Verizon or or like there's like six or seven other. If you have like almost have any one. type of cable, and, and, and JD, you could have asked to borrow my password to at least. Borrow. I do not steal content. That's not. I mean, I am a content creator, and I will not steal content. I'm but we'll talk. My, my but we'll talk. We'll to... talk after the show. Okay. <laughs> I, I, will, I will say that um, watching it on the Sci-Fi app, I'm really disappointed with the Sci-Fi app because it would do it would do weird things when um, well, you're first you're forced to watch commercials, which is okay if it's just like one commercial, maybe two and thirty seconds. But there was one point where I was watching four minutes of commercials I, on I the will, app on I, my phone. I'll say, and, believe it or not, I'm going to say something nice about Comcast, but I was watching it on demand and, um, they only had one or two commercials on the commercial breaks. And that was yeah, it. Yeah. See, that, that was the thing though. It's screwed, it screwed up on my, on, <laughs> it screwed up for me. Wait, um, wait like it, the it, guy it, who worked for Comcast is, has it screwed yeah, up. Yeah, well, it it would start playing a commercial and then it would like do that weird um digital break on the screen and then it wouldn't play the rest. And when I tried to fast forward then go back, it would lose its place and then go back to the beginning. I'm not sure whether that I'm actually trying to find out internally why that did that. I don't know if it's just because it was sci fi and I was already having trouble with their app, so Maybe well, it's their system or what, but it's because you work there and that's what happens. Anyway, uh, yeah, giving me more work to <laughs> figure out this. <laughs> so on that note, obviously we're both suggesting to go and watch it. Um, yeah, definitely. And, uh, and JD will eventually watch it, I think. 
<laughs> in 2025? 20, someday. Yeah. Someday. When uh, he's done coaching and his son is grown. And I stop writing. And you stop writing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not going to happen. All right. Nope, start, start a new book tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, then, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thanks for listening, and don't let your cape caught in the door. Have a good week.